Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial where we'll show you everything about my new product the Beyond Film Emulation DCTL. It also includes LUTs and power grades. So just to show you real quick I'm just dragging this power grade in here and it automatically loads up this DCTL and as you can see there are a huge amount of sliders but don't be imitated it's very straightforward and easy to use. It's basically loading up some LUTs that I've created and you can mix the hue, saturation and luminance of different ones together and even dial in the look via mixing two different profiles together. So you're just selecting your profiles here, hit the mix and adjust the strength, do the same for the saturation and the luminance. As you can see I'm just not having like a Fuji 500T that I profiled here, but you can also go and say, okay, I prefer to have a Kodak 500T or let's say for the luminance, I want to go with the synthetic look that's based on a Knives Out demo from Steve Yedlin and so on and so forth. Next, you have the ability to do a highlight roll off and also a toe compress. You could just show this curve and then do your highlight roll off however you prefer. You get very smooth and nice looking results with this technique and it's a pretty advanced formula for adjusting your tone curve. And last but not least we also have RGB split toning in place so you can even alter your profiles more to your likings. You could also clean your whites and your blacks and adjust the overall strength of the look. As you can see it's super easy to use and that's not even all because you also have power grades where you can just apply different LUTs and you have the stack pre-made already. And all of this is not just working within Log C3 but also in SSCCD and DaVinci White Gamut. But now let's start from the beginning and go through how to install this product my color management setup and last but not least how to work with these profiles in detail. Alright so reset this one for now and let's head to my finder and that's the folder structure you have in place when downloading this product. As you can see you have a folder for Aces CCT with all the LUTs included. SYN stands for Synthetic Profiles, AS stands for ARI Scanner, SC stands for Scanity 4K. These are the naming conventions so you know what they are and in here you have the working color space and gamma curve. So this one is Aces CCD AP01. That means because it's a scene referred look that its input is Aces CCD and also its output is Aces CCD. The same is true for the ARI Log C3 Alexa White Gamma 3 folder. Again all the LUTs, input is log C3, output is log C3 and last but not least I also ported it to DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And one very important thing here is, as you may have noticed already, we have a DCTL within this folder structure and please do not drag this DCTL into your DCTL folder if you have one in place but leave it in the respective folder otherwise it won't work. That's super important and it's true for all the different formats. And last but not least you have a power grades folder in place so you can easily import these ones into your power grades folder and there's a beyond film emulation mixer. This one basically mimics the DCTL if you prefer to work within a very complex node tree. One that loads up your DCTL so you don't have to go through the list. Another one where you can split just the luminance and the saturation. So you don't split hue, saturation and luminance like with this one, but just luminance and saturation. So for example, you can take the luminance part of one LUT and the chrominance part of another one and mix them together to a completely new one. And with this LUT mixer, you can mix different LUTs together. So you use the entire LUTs on this one, but just apply, for example, three LUTs at 33% of strength. Then you end up again with a completely new one. As you can see, the possibilities with this lookback are pretty endlessly. And I designed this one so that it's as flexible as possible for all you guys. 
Again, the power grids are provided for Asus, Ari and DaVinci White Gamut. And in here, you will also find a readme file that you can go through where I will explain some details on how these profiles were built. And again, a short introduction on how to use these ones. I would suggest to copy and paste this entire folder into your LUTs folder on your system. So I have it in here already. I've deleted the readme file and also it depends on how you want to work, but I leave the power grades one in here, but you have to import this separately. I have a demystify color folder in here and have all the other products in here too. So that would be my suggestion, but you can do it however you want to. When your resolve is already running, you have to restart that you actually see the DCTL loading up. For the LUTs, you can just go to your LUTs folder and hit refresh and then you will see them. Here they are. And for the power grades, you can just add a new power grade album via right mouse click, name it however you want to, and then go to your power grades folder and drag all the ones you want in place. All right, so for my project setup, I prefer a custom color managed workflow. So as you can see, I have red shots in here. These are provided by Thomas Dunzendorfer from Faded Works. Thanks for that, Thomas. And in my group pre-clip level, I always transform from the camera color space and gamma to Ari White Gamma 3 and Ari Lord C3. The reason for this is because I really love working with the ALF2 Rec 709 LUT from Ari. But obviously, as you can see, you could also use the Asus CCD or DaVinci White Gamut workflow. If you want to mimic this workflow, make sure to go into your project settings and set your timeline color space to Ari Log C3 and your output color space to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. I choose the timeline color space for Log C3 so that my HDR wheels, for example, are behaving and working correctly, especially when I'm changing exposure or the white balance. And my output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because I have a Rec 709 LUT at the end of my node tree and also my display is calibrated to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Obviously, you could also color manage with DaVinci White, Gamut and Asus CCD node-based and I really prefer working node-based, but that's up to you. And if you want to dive more into color management, you could check out my website because I have a lot of tutorials explaining this in detail. So that's my setup and now let's go into working with all the tools provided. Obviously, you could just go to your LUT folder and make sure that you're in the correct folder and you could just apply a LUT, for example, the 2383 warm saturation. And as it's seen referred, you could also just dial the strength back however you want to, add a serial before, adjust the exposure, add some saturation and maybe dial the white balance a bit warmer. And as you can see, you can get really nice looking images pretty easily. Let's go to another shot like this one, for example, add a serial node and use the DCTL on this one. So head to our power grades folder and drag and drop it into here. DCTL is in place and let's see what it does. So this before and after. And now just play with the settings. And see what LUT works best for this footage. And refine again to see if we can come up with an even better result. Again, dial the exposure a bit back, warm it up, and you have a pretty decent looking result immediately. I use this shot also in the promo, so I've created this one already. So this is the node tree, and let's disable all of this for now some basic corrections in here and here's the beyond film emulation so without and with and i use the filmic neutral the kodak 500d 2383 cold t set warm set heavy and knife sort 
mix them together, adjusted the split tone a tiny bit and also the roll off. And as you can see, the result is super nice. I also boosted the saturation a bit with my Film Aesthetics 2.0 version 3 DCTL. And then you just have to add a bit of elation grain and some vintage lens effect. And as you can see, the tones are looking very nice if you ask me. So before and after and before and after. All right, so let's head to another shot. Maybe use this one and you're not bound just to use the DCTL, but you could also go in here and say, okay, I want the LUT mixer for example and see what this one is doing. Go into the LUT mixer and just add different LUTs. The default setup are three LUTs and everyone is at the strength of 0.333, but you could also add even more LUTs if you want to or adjust the strength. Don't feel restricted with anything I'm showing here, but mix and combine and do whatever you want to and gets you to a nice looking image with these LUTs. So do it before and after. Maybe before we do this, let's add a bit more contrast to this image. like so and now we see this way better and as you can see it before and after i think this looks pretty good right off the box but just for the sake of it go in and play around and see if we can get to an even nicer looking image And as you can see, the possibilities are endless. Let's delete this one for now and go to our last power grade that's included and that's the luminance and saturation split. And with this one, for example, I can say, okay, I want the chrominance of a 500T, but the luminance of a 2383 or vice versa. And I think that's looking good. And now just tweak in a note before the offset a bit. and dial the look back and again we have a completely different look but it's looking very nice if you ask me so i think you get the point don't feel restricted of doing anything that i'm showing you but just mix and match and if you own the film aesthetics 2.0 power grade pack even mix it with this one because i think they work great in combination and you could also not just add one dctl but feel free to also use two and set the key output of this one lower and this one and then do completely different stuff and see how this works. So the possibilities are really endless. And last but not least, I wanted to also show you how to work with these curves. So I'm heading to another shot for now and disable the timeline blanking real quick. So you see the entire curve. Okay, that's a bad example. So let's go to this one and now we are seeing the entire, or pretty much the entire curve. Scale it up a tiny bit. So last but not least, I'm showing you the roll off and the split tone and how to work with it. First, let's set the white point and play around with the shoulder strength and the pivot. So my goal is always to create a smooth looking curve that's rendering nicely. And now you can do the same with the black point. And with the split tone, the mid gray for the respective color space is locked. And then I can say, okay, I want in my lows to either add or subtract red, add or subtract green, and add or subtract blue. And then you can also say, okay, I want clean blacks and adjust the range of it and do the same for the highlights. 
and divides. And if it's too strong for you overall, you could also dial it back in here or in here. And that's it. Feel free to always reach out via email. If you're having any questions or encountering problems, I'm always happy to help you out and get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you like this product and you're as excited as me for dialing in looks with the profiles I made available. As always, it's a one-time purchase, no subscription, you will own the product forever and there are no maintenance fees and if updates are coming out, they are free of charge too. So thanks for watching and also thanks for your purchase if you own the product already. I hope you enjoy it and see you soon on another tutorial. Bye!